Amazing new time zone and reality, everyone. My name is Vel here at Science Way, and today I'm coming at you with another 4D Vision Anatomy set. This time it is the Stegosaurus from the Dinosaur line. This one's going to be a little long, but of course, sped up for all of you at home. So go ahead, get your favorite tea or coffee, or juice, or even just water, and we're going to go ahead and assemble this. Now, while I'm assembling this, I'm going to read all the information that comes with the instructions. So let's get started. The name Stegosaurus means roof lizard or covered lizard in reference to its bony plates, which is the best known member of the Stegosauridae. This extinct genus of herbivorous dinosaur lived during the late Cretaceous period, around 155 to 150 million years ago, in the area which is now called Western North America. Though there were closely related dinosaur species living in other parts of the world, including Africa, China, Mongolia, and Europe. Stegosaurus was originally named by Ornithio Charles Marsh in 1877 from remains recovered north of Morrison, Colorado, averaging around 9 meters or 30 feet long and 4 meters or 14 feet tall. This quadrupedal dinosaur was one of the most easily identifiable species due to the distinctive double row of kite-shaped bony plates rising along at the back and with two pairs of long spikes extending near the end of the tail. Stegosaurus had a long and narrow head which was small in proportion to the body. In fact, Stegosaurus weighing over 5 tons, it only had a brain of no more than 8 grams or 2.8 ounces. Stegosaurus and related genera were herbivores. Some paleontologists believe Stegosaurus would eat mosses, ferns, horsetails, which is a kind of plant, cycads, and conifers of some fruits near the ground as well. All right, now we're moving on to the different parts of the Stegosaurus. First up is the skull. Stegosaurus had a very long and narrow skull, which was small in proportion to its body. It had a small antorbital fenestra, the hole between the nose and eye, common to most archosaurs, including modern birds, though lost in extant crocodilians. Stegosaurus had a tiny brain at about 2.5 centimeters or one inch long. Next we have gular armor, also called throat armor, which is a series of tiny bony ossicles that lie almost like chainmail around the throat and base of the neck. Next we have teeth. Stegosaurus was a herbivore and ate mosses, ferns, and other plants that were close to the ground. Stegosaurus had a beak but no teeth in the front, and it had tiny, weak cheek teeth on both sides of its jaws. Next is the eyes. The eyes of Stegosaurus were on the sides of its head, which helped it to scan for any incoming predators in the surrounding area. Paleontologists believe Stegosaurus may have had poor eyesight. That is why it had an excellent sense of smell. Next is the bony plate. Stegosaurus had two rows of bony plates embedded along at the back of the tail and alternated in alignment. There were 17 in total. Paleontologists found that there were well-nourished blood vessels in the plates, which may help to regulate the body temperature. The bony plates may have also been used for protection or mating display purposes too. Next we have the heart. Even though there are no fossilized hearts for us to understand, we believe Stegosaurus was reasonably warm-blooded. Scientists believe Stegosaurus sh should have a very strong heart to deal with heavy physiological load, such as escape from predators. Next are the lungs. Stegosaurus had a huge body. It needed high supply of oxygen to its muscles and organs during running. Unlike two legged dinosaurs, such as Tyrannosaurus and Velociraptor, Stegosaurus had more room for a large pair of lungs, so we believe Stegosaurus might not have had extra air sacs outside his lungs. Next is the stomach. Based on anatomy of the digestive system of living herbivores nowadays, Stegosaurus should have a large stomach and like many herbivorous dinosaurs, it swallowed small rocks as gastrulus to help match the tough vegetable matter in its enormous stomach. Next is the intestines. Like other living herbivores, Stegosaurus should have had long intestines for food digestion and nutrient absorption. Some microorganisms might live in the Stegosaurus's intestine system to break down cellulose, fibers, and other polymers which cannot be digested 
in the stomach. Large intestines help to absorb salts and water from the food. Next is the liver. Livers are present in vertebrates and some other animals. So, scientists believe Stegosaurus also had this large glandular organ. As a chemical factory, the liver played a major role in metabolism and had a number of other important functions in the Stegosaurus's body. Next, we have the ovary. The ovary was an organ which produced eggs. After mating with a male Stegosaurus, female Stegosaurus laid her eggs through cloaca in a nest. Next is the skeleton. Stegosaurus had a distinctive and unusual posture, with a heavily rounded back, short fore, strong and long rear legs, head held low to the ground no more than one meter, or three feet, high, and a stiffened tail held high in the air. The next and last part is the tail. Stegosaurus had two pairs of long spikes extending near to the end of the tail. Different species of Stegosaurus had different numbers of tail spikes. Stegosaurus ungulus had eight spikes, and Stegosaurus stenops had four spikes. These tail spikes were up to 1.2 meters, or four feet, long, and were used for protection from predators. The tail was also for balancing its body while running. Now we're on to the last information section, which is the Q&A. Question. What was the weight of a living adult Stegosaurus? Since Stegosaurus had already been extinct, we can only come up to the most possible estimate by complicated calculations according to its skeleton size and structure. By most estimates, the average full-grown Stegosaurus weighed in around 5 tons. Question. Was Stegosaurus cold-blooded or warm-blooded? Nowadays, most of the scientists think Stegosaurus was probably warm-blooded. Question. Would Stegosaurus take care of their babies? Scientists think Stegosaurus might not take care of their babies. They believe Stegosaurus just laid their eggs in nests and then walked away. Question. What were the functions of those bony plates on the Stegosaurus' back? Stegosaurus had a total of 17 plates on its back. Paleontologists found that there were well-nourished blood vessels in the plates that helped to heat and cool the body of Stegosaurus. They were also used to scare away attackers or to attract a mate. Question. What food did Stegosaurus eat? Stegosaurus was an herbivore. It ate plants such as mosses, ferns, horsetails, cycads, and conifers or fruits as well. Question. How does Stegosaurus defend themselves from enemies? Stegosaurus might turn their bunny plates into a red color by filling them up with blood, which is to scare away other enemies. The four long spikes on its strong tail could be used as a weapon. Also, part of its body was covered with armor-like skin. Question. Someone said Stegosaurus had two brains. Was it true? It might be true. Stegosaurus had the smallest brain in its head, which was just about the size of a golf ball. Scientists found a large canal in Stegosaurus's hip region of the spinal cord, which could have accommodated a structure up to 20 times larger than the famously small brain. This second brain might be used to control its back end and tail too. Question. How did Stegosaurus walk? And how fast could Stegosaurus move? The rear legs of Stegosaurus were longer than its front legs, and it walked on four legs. However, scientists still do not know how fast it could move. All right, and that is it for all the information in the instructions. Now, on to my thoughts on the assembly. As usual, when you get some of these anatomy models, there are some parts that are already pre-assembled, so that's always nice. It is up to you if you want to take everything apart and then assemble it back together. Sometimes parts are really hard to take off and or put back together, so it's not highly recommended, but it's up to you. At the end, I don't know if it's my model specifically or if this is just how this product is, but the Ha two halves parts will not close fully near the head. For some reason, the small bony plates near the head 
are misaligned with the holes in the glass part. So it's kind of blocking it from snapping together. So it's kind of just forever open in the front, kind of. It's close enough to where nothing will fall out, but you know, it would have been nice to fully close it. The only other part that gave me trouble was the inner guts of some of these models don't really connect to anything. They just kind of loosely lay there. So getting them to stay together while you're putting them inside the rib cage can be a little tricky. What was kind of nice in the instructions, it said to assemble the rib cage first and then slide the different guts in after the fact. I could see doing it both ways where you put the guts in first and then put the other half of the rib cage on. It's up to you, I think. But I do like the method of just sliding the guts in after both rib cages have been attached to the spine. Something I noticed too was I'm not sure if I just wasn't paying attention when I was assembling the Brachiosaurus model, but the texture of the bones were different in the Stegosaurus. I actually really like it. It feels like it has more grooves in the bones. I'm not sure if I remember correctly, but the Brachiosaurus bones, I believe, were smoother. So this added texture, for me anyway, is really nice. It just adds a bit of detail. And speaking of textures, I love the feeling of its skin and the bony plates. It's so rigid. You can just feel the different indents and curves in it. Not just the bony plates, but the skin as well. It's just got a lot of texture to it. And of course, having the spikes at the tail stick out from the inside is really cool to look at too. And you can definitely tell where they added a bit of coloration to the exposed parts of the spikes in the tail to say, you know, these have been used in battle before, or, you know, these are outside, so they're, they've been through some wear and tear. So I thought that was a really cool touch visually as well. All in all, it was a fun model to put together. I do really like the half and half models. If you haven't seen it before, I have made or I should say put together, I didn't make it. I put together a frog model, which is not a half and half look. It's more of a two thirds look. On the back of the frog, it's pretty much open and there's little holes on certain parts. So you can see the inside, but the Stegosaurus and the Brachiosaurus have a half and half look. So half, si half the side is exposed. Well, it's in a clear glass, not glass plastic casing. And the other side, has the eyes and the skin and the flesh colors of the dinosaurs. So I don't know, I kind of like the half ones more, but I can definitely see the appeal of the two thirds approach as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the assembly and the information of this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below and which kit should I get next? I got a bunch on my list, but it'll be cool to see which ones are more popular. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.